What's going on everybody? This is a video I've been very excited for in the series. We're going to introduce TypeScript, how to bring it into our Node.js project without making it too crazy complicated. So first let's talk about what is TypeScript. It's a language that transpiles down to JavaScript. So the TypeScript doesn't get executed in the browser directly. Instead, it's converted to JavaScript, and then that is executed in the browser. So the end result should be the same, still JavaScript, but we get a lot of added benefits that TypeScript brings, specifically static typing, the ability to give variables types ahead of time. And this is going to bring a lot of our typically runtime errors, issues that show up when we run our code. It's going to bring them up sooner at compile time or transpiling time when we go from TypeScript down to JavaScript. We're going to see errors and we're going to be able to fix those problems in our code way earlier. A lot of projects today use TypeScript most likely, if you're going to be a JavaScript developer or working in Node or React, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with TypeScript. So this video is going to not be so much about the TypeScript language, but more about setting it up. So there's a few steps to bring TypeScript into your existing Node.js project. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. And in the next video, we'll start learning about the actual TypeScript language and the different types and all that stuff. First, I want to give special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, which is Ultra Edit, the editor we've been using for this series. If you're looking for a ultra customizable editor, I'll drop a link down below. So let's get to it by introducing TypeScript into our project. So to begin, we're going to install TypeScript. So we'll say npm install, and we're going to use either dash dash dev or dash capital D TypeScript, and this is going to install it as what's known as a dev dependency, which is slightly different, and that's because we're only going to need TypeScript in development. As mentioned, TypeScript doesn't run on the server, it's always going to be JavaScript, which is the final result. So once this is installed, you can check out your package.json and you'll see this new dev dependencies, TypeScript, and then whatever version. You can also install TypeScript globally to get some various commands, specifically TSC. So you might already have it, but if not, you can say npm install dash G for global. So not for this specific project, but for your entire computer. And now you should have the TSC command available to you. Pretty simple. So to begin, we can initialize a TypeScript project, but we don't have to start everything from scratch because we can actually do this within our existing project. So we'll say TSC dash dash init, and it's going to create a tsconfig.json. So whenever you have a tsconfig.json, that means you're working within a TypeScript project. This is going to be the general structure there. Target's going to say ES 2016. Yours might say something a little newer like ES 2020. Uh, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Um, and then just some of the other defaults, like such as the common JS, which I think we talked about in one of the very first videos in this series. So you should now see that file in your project. And there's going to be a lot of different comments in here, so you can ignore a lot of this. But this will give you some of the different options if you want to look through and see what's possible. Okay, so we got TypeScript added to our project. Now what? What do we actually do? What's it? What, how, how, yeah, how? So we can say TSC and then the name of the file. And we don't currently have a TypeScript file, so we currently only have the JS file. So when we issue this, it's going to say that it is a JavaScript file. So you need to change this to a TypeScript file by renaming it to index.ts. There's also the ability to change it to enable to allow JavaScript if you want to set that up, but there's not really a good reason to do that if you want to get the benefit of TypeScript. So what I recommend is to change your file names to .ts. So inside of our source, we're going to just rename this to app did I really say index? Yeah, I just realized app.js instead of index.js, but that's fine. So we'll just say app.ts. I think this command would have said the same thing even if it was a random file. I think it just notices that it ends in a .js and complains. So now that we actually have an app.ts, we should be able to compile this with TypeScript. Before we compile, we can also rename customer.js. So we will rename to customer.ts. Now you can compile your code with TSC, and this is going to take a TypeScript file and transpile it down to a JavaScript file. So taking a look over here at the files here, 
we will get an app.js. So this was generated from the app.ts and you can look at it and you can see it's very uh, computery looking. So it's kind of based on app.ts but it's not going to look exactly the same. Now, if you're getting errors, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now, this is not by any means recommended, but this will at least let you compile. You can say TS no check, and that's going to ignore the TypeScript errors so you can follow along with getting the TypeScript added to your project. This is kind of like a hack. It's almost as if you're just using a regular JavaScript file, so it's not really recommended if you don't have to use it, but just given that as a tip. If you see that anywhere in the wild, that's what it means. To compile everything, you can say TSC-P for project, and then identify where that project is based on the TS config file. As we mentioned, this identifies your TypeScript project. So that is how you would compile everything. Now when we do this, we get a bunch of errors pop up, and that's exactly what I was talking about with doing this no check temporarily, just so I can finish getting everything set up. Then we can go back and figure out how to fix these errors. So I'll just say TS no check, and I'll do something very similar for the models file. So going into customer.ts, I'll go ahead and add that line as well. So this is what it's gonna look like. So those are all saved, and now what I wanna do is I want to compile the project again, and we're not getting any errors pop up, and you can see that this will generate a customer.js, and it's going to generate an app.js, so any of the TypeScript files get compiled down to JavaScript files. And additionally, there's a watch option for this, so you can say dash dash watch, and any changes made is going to refresh that compilation. So that can be an interesting step. So for example, I could just change this real quick, and you can see it'll retry to compile. But I'm gonna change that back and save, and there we go. So every single time that's going to generate new JavaScript files. You are still going to need to run those JavaScript files if you want to see that change actively. So to test this out, I can open a new git bash window, change to this location, so we'll change into documents and then customers, and then we'll say npm run start. This will start running, and our app is now listening. So let's go ahead and just see what happens when we access some endpoint. Let's go to Postman and we will just go to the main endpoint. This just says welcome. If we then head over to app.ts, find that endpoint. So scrolling through here, we have that here. And also we have a lot of bloat code that we don't really need anymore so we can clean it up but not to get too distracted. So let's go ahead and change this to welcome with two exclamation marks, hit save. This will refresh our server. We hit send on the endpoint again, and you can see it has welcome with two exclamation marks. So Nodemon caught that change in our JavaScript file and refreshed our server. And you can see that here, restarting due to changes. So now it's like this two-step process. We change our code, we save, the TypeScript compiler, which is watching, will then generate new JavaScript code. Nodemon is watching for JavaScript code changes. That'll refresh our server and we get those changes live. So at this point you have TypeScript installed on your project, but there's a few issues. One, the setup commands and stuff are a little wonky. And two, we haven't actually talked about any of the TypeScript code. We just had all those errors that we just ignored. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in the upcoming episodes, how we can continually improve on this to actually get the benefits of using TypeScript. So stay tuned for the next video and peace out.